guys, it's Mrs. Underwood Jones. Um, so Mr. Underwood Jones is busy uh, preparing for our online Dungeons and Dragons game uh, that we're having tomorrow. So I thought while he was busy doing that, I would um, record the second video and just sort of reflect on how today was. First day with year 10 students coming back in. Um, I woke up five o'clock in the morning. I was really, really excited. Um, couldn't get back to sleep. I was really keen to get in and get back to school, um, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but I, I definitely enjoyed feeling really, really positive about going back. Um, my clock in the office hit 25 past um, nine and I was out the door saying hello to students that had come in and it was just so nice to see students even if they were lining up with the social distancing measures uh, but it was just so nice to see students and they'd grown so much which sounds really really silly but like you can definitely see the changes in students even after what is you know in comparison to their five year school career is quite a short period of time uh, so it was really really nice to see students i really enjoyed it um, i'm back in school tomorrow so i look forward to saying hello to the next group that are coming in um, so just to recap the sort of stuff that i've discussed in the last video was just how thoughts, behaviour, sort of bodily sensations and emotions can all feed and interact together, um, which can, you know, be affected by the different situations that we're in. Um, and we did the relaxed breathing as the first technique. Um, and I posed a bit of a, a bizarre question at the end, which was asking, can anxiety actually be good for us? Um, and, you know, Sometimes we have to be compassionate to ourselves because we tend to, you know, view some emotions and some feelings as either good or bad and things are very black and white and, and crystal clear. Um, whereas, you know, that isn't really the case in reality. We're complicated beings. We have a range of emotions. We can have, you know, two conflicting emotions happen at the same time for different reasons and different scenarios. Um, so it's about understanding that it's there, you accept it, and then it's about seeing that when you can accept it and when you can work on it, it then lessens how much of an effect this can have on you. Um, and again, it's about that being empowered and taking control rather than just feeling that these things are happening to you. Um, so, you know, again, going back to a, a slightly sciencey route, you know, we've evolved hundreds of millions of years of evolution anxiety is still with us um so on an evolutionary scale there must be a benefit to for anxiety and feeling anxious so what i wanted to do was sort of explore that and to try and and help you realize that you can say thank you to your brain and to your body for making you feel anxious because it does have its benefits and it's just about trying to recalibrate your levels of anxiety so then you can still function and you can still get on with your day-to-day -day life without it feeling quite so crippling. So going on this idea that anxiety can be helpful, it's, it's important to give it a little bit of context. So back, you know, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago, we needed the feeling of, of being anxious um, to cause a fear response in the body. And some of the older students watching may remember their lessons in science on uh, fight, flight or freeze. Um, if you're a younger student, then that's probably something that you will get to later on in your academic career. But essentially, it's about do we need to fight a predator or, you know, fight to, to protect our lives? Do we need to run away from something or do we need to hide? And I don't know about you, but the only time I've seen tigers recently is on Netflix. Um, I haven't seen very many down the bottom of our road. So it's, it's a system using the amygdala, which is sort of like the watchdog of the body, it, you know, part of the brain that is trying to protect you and is looking for danger. And it's sort of processing situations and things that it's encountered before to try and work out what the most likely outcome is to, so that it can keep you safe. And 
you know, like with my little sock puppet, sometimes the body can process information and sort of overreact. It perceives a threat that is not necessarily there. So when we get a stress response, there's a load of uh, changes and effects that it has on the body. Things like adrenaline, getting your heart pumping, you know, heart beat faster, breathing changes, and you know, blood flow is directed towards major muscle groups because you probably, you know, it, it's trying to figure out if you need to fight or run away. Um, so for me, you might have noticed when I get anxious, my saliva goes. I start getting a bit of a dry mouth and also I get sort of tingly sweaty fingers that that's common for me and as much as we will all have a range of these things that happen some of them can be quite individualized you know you might notice one thing feels a bit more predominant than some of the others um, but all of this stuff that your body is doing is trying to help protect you so if it's good for us, then why do we see that anxiety is bad? And this is about sort of the brain feeling that there's danger everywhere and that it's sort of um, hyper alert and hyper vigilant and it's causing that stress response to happen over and over and over again um, to a point where it's not helpful for us and it's not good for us. So something that is helpful to do is to stop and think what sort of responses do you feel more predominantly because being able to acknowledge and identify when you're feeling stressed because sometimes it's not so obvious to go I'm feeling stressed because of this situation sometimes you sort of go oh why are my hands sweaty and then you make the link almost in reverse so it, it's good to figure out what your predominant symptoms if you like are so then that can help you identify when you're feeling stressed or it can help you just sort of self-reflect on if you are feeling stressed so th this is sort of a, a video about being compassionate with yourself and not trying to fight with your your body and your mind and not trying to view things in such a negative way it's about acknowledging that there is a response to feeling stressed feeling anxious feeling worried and that the body is trying its best to look after you even if it doesn't feel that way at the time so it's a case of acknowledging thank you for trying to look after me but we need to calm down now because I am, you know, my life is not in danger at this moment. Okay. So, and actually changing that mindset to looking at it in a more positive light can have a lot of advantages in helping you to reduce stress and anxiety already. Um, so it, it's a lot of little changes and a li little things that, um, that you tweak about how you think and how you feel about things that can then lead to a cascade of differences as you go along. So just to point out that this, um, this yellow piece here, it is good to be stressed. That is what this section is telling you, optimum stress, the best stress to be in, in order to improve your performance. So things like taking part in a sporting fixture or going into an exam or you know something where you need to create something or do something it is good to feel a little bit worried it's good for the body it you know it produces endorphins it uh, so you breathing more um, you are you know your heart's beating faster you're getting that oxygen around the body so there is there is benefits I promise you there is benefits to having a little bit of stress and a little bit of worry the bit that that you know different situations can occur is when you've you've reached that optimum and it then starts to lead to issues in the body so this sort of fatigue and exhaustion bit and you'll find that there'll be lots of situations in life in activities where you'll flip and sort of zigzag between the whole range of these so again the take-home message is that the body is trying to look after you it is good to have some stress and some worry we're not trying to eradicate it we're only trying to make it manageable so it's not 
causing problems in day-to-day -day life. So, the technique. This is my favourite technique, um, by the way, and I've actually done quite a few of it during this video that you won't have even noticed. And that's why this is my favourite technique. So progressive muscle relaxation is where you deliberately target dart, where you deliberately target muscle groups to tense and relax them. Why are we going to tense and relax muscle groups? Well, a you're focusing on something different. So again, like the breathing, you're focusing and you're thinking about something that is keeping your mind trained on relaxing and easing stress. Um, the other thing is that it is probably one of the most personal and accessible techniques. You can do it lying down, you can do it sitting up, you can do it in the classroom, you can do it on the bus, you can do it on the train, you can do it sitting at the dinner table as you're drifting off to sleep at night. You know, there is no place I could think of where you can't take part in this. I'm sure there'll be someone that will find somewhere that you can't. Um, but the, the, the key thing here is that when you are deliberately tensing and relaxing muscle groups, you're also learning what your muscles are feeling like when you are tense and being tense can be a sign of you know having stress or anxiety because the body is trying to get ready to fight or flee or freeze so you know there, there is going to be an element whether it's the main one or not is up to individuals but there's going to be an element of muscles feeling tense and if you notice that your muscles are feeling tense, you can then deliberately relax the muscles, which can then lead to feeling less stressed and less anxious because you're deliberately doing things to ease some of that anxiety. So really the, the sequence that you do it in doesn't really matter, I don't think. The, the aim is that you are um, repeating the sequence that you are not trying to overexert yourself this isn't about you know building muscle mass or you know this isn't an exercise um, in that sort of sense um, so it's not about you know tensing your muscles as hard as you possibly can it's it's not about straining anything but it is about recognizing what particular muscles feel like when they are relaxed and when they're tense so I just wanted to finish off with my reminder from the last video, which is I'm not a trained mental health practitioner. Um, I'm a student support leader at a school. So I've you know spoken to a lot of students and have a little bit of an insight into some of the sources of stress and anxiety for them. Um, the main thing is to reach out and talk to people, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed by your feelings of anxiety and stress um, because we want people to be happy and healthy and sometimes people need a little bit of help and a bit of a nudge in the right direction to help them get there. Um, I personally use the Headspace um, app. I do some uh, meditation and mindfulness 10 minutes or so every day um, and I, I use the sleep portion of the app to help me drift off at night. Um, that's the one that I personally found um, accessible but there's loads and loads of different ways um, of reaching out and speaking to people if you need some support and there's nothing wrong with needing support in that way. So what I would like to talk about in the next video is about who feels anxious and to pose the question are you all alone out there? I uh, will see you for the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.